What's up guys, all here, and here we are to do a breakdown of Azeratha HS's talent versus hard work. And I saw Yuji Tadori under hard work and Midori Izuku under talent. On the th this has got to be bait. This has got to be bait. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I had to immediately react. I didn't want to, I, like, I heard two seconds. I bought the first, like, literally the zero. I have to react. Uh, mainly because this has got to be bait. Because mainly, here's the thing. We don't, we'll, we'll, we'll start. And then I'll give my thoughts on it. I'll give my thoughts immediately before Azeratha gets into it. But this is a 10 minute and 13 second video. I can promise you we will be here for more than 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So please do me a favor. Check out Azeratha HS. His channel will be linked in the description down below. Once again, I'm so sorry. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name properly. I think he literally introduces himself on some of his videos. I need to make sure I listen closely that time to make sure I can introduce him properly. Link to his channel will be in the description down below along with the link to the original video. Fantastic content creator. Covers a diversity of topics. Just not just in Jujutsu Kai. In Jujutsu Kaisen, <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen, or My Hero Academia, but across the anime and manga field. Fantastic content creator, fantastic editing, fantastic storytelling, everything, everything wonderful. Please go check him out. If you go to the original video, tell him Pencil sent you. And now, I would like to think. I don't think too often, though. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me. <clears throat> Are you ready? Three, two, one. Yuji from Okay. Midoriya is not talented. That's kind of like the point. Like he's smart. <laughs> he's smart, don't get me wrong. But like like the, the, the whole point of Binary Academia, like from from the very first chat, like not all men are created equal. That boy is not like legitimately, we have a direct example of someone who is talented with the quirk he ends up receiving. That's all might. Who didn't have to train. For 100% one for all. He just got it off rip, round start. Like that, that was light work for All Might. There was not a care, worry, or concern in the world for him about breaking his bones or nothing. Midoriya is the opposite of talented. He's the definition of hard work. Is he lucky that he ran into All Might that day? Absolutely. But we need to have a story, don't we? So, of course. But Midoriya is hard work. For Yuji, shock horror. I know a lot of people are going to be bamboozled by this. I know people are going to be like, no, Pencil, you're wrong. This can't, this can't be the truth. This, this can't be real. But yes, it is real. I am, in fact, that guy with the pencil. And I also do have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And Yuji Todori is talented. Very, very talented. Insanely talented. I want you to realize this. Like, it, he was born superhuman. Of course, that comes from very specific things like his mama but just like everyone who's talented gets very specific things from their parents yuji Todori is talented before he ever learned a curse from energy he was already arguably the strongest creature on the planet excluding the sorcerers because he already had next level stats next level speed next level durability next level striking strength he was born talented sukuna only made him better by unlocking his cursed energy and don't get me wrong, Yuji works hard, but like, so does Midoriya. And regardless, Yuji's still talented. Bro learned the idea of Black Flash and proceeded to tie the max record, which was done by a full-grown adult sorcerer in their prime, in Nanami Kento. The only other people who had used Black Flash up to that point were full-grown adults. And Yuta Akotsu, which was retroactively added in the movie. But guess what Yuta Akotsu also is? An extreme prodigy. Insanely talented with Jujutsu. That's noted about Yuta's character, and Yuji's a prodigy too. He's extremely talented too. He he goes through it, but realistically, Yuji doesn't work too well. When do we see Yuji train? Like, 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 tell me. When do we see Yuji train or try to develop his character? No, he learns on the fly. He learns on the job. The only time we saw him train was after he got got the first time. And then Gojo ended up having him properly learn to control his cursed energy. And they ended up releasing him a few months later when they released the Yuji DLC. That's the only training Yuji's ever done. He's insanely talented. Which is why I'm assuming this title is bait and it's something about the opposite being said. I'm assuming a lot of people are saying Yuji is hard work and then Midoriya is talented even though the opposite is true. Itadori is extremely talented who's put in the work and discovered a lot live on the battlefield. Meanwhile, Midori Izuku is very experimental, very untalented by the very nature of his character, and then trained very, very hard, and also learned a lot in the field in order to get to the level he is today. That's what I have to guess. I'm assuming this is bait. 
<laughs> Once again, I had to take a shot in the dark. This is probably bait. But the bait worked. Because <laughs> I saw this in my sub box and immediately had to react to it. So let's see what Azeroth HS has to say. Itadori Yuji from Jujutsu Kaisen is hard work, and Izuku Midoriya from My Hero Academia is talent or something like that. Talent versus hard work is a pretty niche piece of online anime discourse that exists to compare. So yeah, okay, so this is gonna be him down by. I'm gonna assume people just people just don't like they I, I'm not gonna <laughs> here's the thing. I say this all the time. I'll be completely rude with you. I am not a literary analyst. I do. I have a degree. I even have my master's. Neither of them are anywhere near close to literary analysis. They just aren't. They simply are. They do not exist. <laughs> they exist somewhere else. Not in literary analysis. Not the case. In the slightest. But like, y'all, I I cannot fathom how you read both of these series and somehow got that. I can, here's the thing, I can somewhat understand misinterpreting Yuji because he's doesn't have the biggest talent from round start, which is a curse technique. He doesn't have that. And spoilers for the entire JJK manga, by the way, just in case you clicked on this video and are like, oh, maybe Pencil Man's not going to talk about anime manga spoilers, or I am. I'm spoiling everything, most likely. But like, up until recently, I'm ready, ready, go, run, spoilers. Yuji has a curse technique now. He finally got the rest of the talent. He got the 80% that was locked away. I think a lot of people take that statement from Gojo. Oh, Yuji only is at like 20% because he doesn't have a curse technique. And thusly, everything he does is hard work. No. The boy is talented. I can understand misinterpreting Yuji, maybe. Because of how the narrative treats him, how he doesn't have a curse technique, and how he goes through it all the time. And goes through it in more permanent ways, arguably, than Midoriya does. I can understand that. I don't get how you see Midoriya and think that's talent, though. I don't. I understand if you see look at Midoriya and see luck, and see contrivance, and see coincidence. I can see that, maybe. Because, once again, the story is built on the coincidence of him running into All Might that day. But, outside of that immediate convenience, everything Midoriya does is hard work. The only other thing that could hypothetically be argued as talent or something innate, which isn't even innate, because it comes from one for all, is when he unlocked the six extra quirks. That is it. That is period point blank. That is it. And even then, he had to train to master those. He unlocked some on the fly and experienced some of them and used some of them very, very well first try in the field, like your Fajins. Like, we'd never... We got loose hints of him training with Gearshift. Float was retroactively introduced as something he trained with. But, like, other than that, everything was hard work. Midori is very consistently training, studying, learning how to use his powers better and better and better and better. He's not innately good at them. Yuji, after he figured out what a Black Flash was, he landed it. After he figured out Cursed Energy, he figured it out, like, the same day. Tech, he learned Blood Manipulation in RCT over the course of a month. And was using them effectively enough that the King of Curses was actually not able to just one-shot him. And actually had to take him a little... He had to pay attention to him, which he never would have had to before, just because Yuji's that talented. A month. Already the strongest Blood Manipulation user in the entire series. <laughs> He got the technique sometime over the month time skip. And he may have gotten the technique two weeks ago in that narrative. We don't know. But he's extremely talented. So he mastered it. Same thing with RCT. Something he was told. I bet he was told about how to do it. Slightly experienced it. Maybe referenced some of his memories of Sukuna using RCT. And was like, oh. And then learned it. He says hard work. But he's lying. <laughs> he's not lying. He probably worked hard. But still. Izuku Midoriya. I don't get how you read the series. And get talent out of that one. Mm -mm. All Might? Yes. Izuku Midoriya? No. But let's see. Compare and contrast different types of character power. To start, what does talent even mean? Well, if we just utilize the tools we have available, uh, okay. It's natural aptitude. Well, in this example, is Izuku Midoriya natural aptitude? No! He isn't. And I don't, once again, I don't get how you, you must have not read chapter one. Or chapter two. Or three. Or four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. All the way up to 416, which is the most recent time recording this. He was just a not riddle. Like, y'all, every single thing Midoriya is doing now is a culmination of all of his hard work. Everything. Everything. The only thing that isn't, the one thing, and like, don't get me wrong, I don't even like Midoriya more than Itadori Yuji. I like Itadori Yuji infinitely more. Midoriya is probably not in my top five MHA characters being completely honest with you. I got Endeavor, I got Hawks, I got Bakugo, I got All Might, I got Shigaraki, I got 
That's about it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't name too many more. Midori's not even in my top five. Well, Yuji's pretty arguably my favorite JJK character. Especially at this point. But even I get it, man. Come on now, y'all. <laughs> if you're, if you're going to do a comparison between them, I get it. It sucks to try to compare them. Because you can't. Because Midoriya slams him in a fight. But, like, don't don't try and twist the narrative. Don't, don't, just, if you want to tell me you didn't read the manga or watch the anime, you can just tell me that. It's okay. It's okay. That's fine. That's all right. It's sweet. It's sweet. You can do that. You can be honest with me if you didn't read it. But if you did, you should know that what's on the screen is apt. He was a loser who had no innate aptitude, unlike Yuji Tadori, who had a bunch of innate aptitude, and proceeded to use and abuse it. Come on now. Let's see. No, the kid who was quite literally born naturally weaker than 80% of the population, and the only reason why he got any chance at all was because he was given a power. That power, by the way, could not be utilized properly immediately, causing him to blow up his limbs extremely violently and painfully, to the point where he had to limit himself and spend the next year of his life training to use just 45% of it. On its face, wouldn't really say that that is natural aptitude. That's being given an opportunity and working twice as hard as anybody else to catch up. Okay, now let's look at the other example. Hard work is a great deal of effort or endurance. Of course, I'm not going to say that Itadori Yuji had to do no hard work whatsoever, but it's impossible to deny his elevated starting platform. Even before getting engrossed in the Jujutsu world, he was extremely, superhumanly strong to the point that people in his school life pointed out his absurd power. He took to cursed energy manipulation pretty quickly, he was out there hitting consecutive black flashes in season 1 before 90% of her cast hit a single one, it's very clear that there was always something unusual with Itadori, some enhanced natural baseline, but there is something more important than separating these two characters into arbitrary talents versus hard work labels. The fact is that these two things can coexist. There is no situation where... T oh, okay, so he's about to go into that. So yeah, we covered the same thing. All right. <laughs> he did it even faster than I did. He did that in one minute and 36 seconds. Immediately disproved any sort of arguments about either. But yeah, both are true. Like, I guess you could say Itadori is... He, he, once again, I do believe Itadori worked hard. Every single one of his battles is hard work. Like, Itadori goes through it. Once again, he is talented with cursed energy manipulation, and he had a very high base. But against people who can manipulate the soul? <laughs> against, against creatures who are the embodiment of human fears? Against the king of curses? Against people who can manipulate laws themselves? Not really. He doesn't manipulate laws. But, like, against people who can strip away his curses? Like, he's worked hard. Do not get me wrong. He's been fighting people with curse techniques without a curse technique. But he still has access to the power system. He still is extremely talented. He's worked hard within his means and metrics, and even trained over that month for the current point in the manga. But he is still more talented than he is hard work, at least in my opinion, just because of how high his base was and how easy it is for him to pick stuff up. Meanwhile, for Midoriya... I'm, but the thing is, I'm not sure what talent, un, other than his brain, you can argue his brain is an innate talent. He's he's consistently stated to have been extremely smart, extremely notable, and extremely good at retaining information and applying it very, very effectively in new ways. That's the only kind of talent you can really argue with Midoriya. He's intellectual. But, like, I guess I can't really argue any sort of physical talent. Like, he had latent potential that was unlocked by All Might over his ten months of training to just receive one for all. That's about it. Like, like, other than that, what else, what other talent do you really give Izuku Midoriya? He's not physically strong at base. He had to work for that. He's not good with his quirk at base. He had to work for that. He's not good with his new quirk. He has to work for that. Like, I don't, I really, like, he's right. Azrath is right. Like, both can coexist. But in this case, I'm, I'm not fully, I'm not fully sure. <laughs> I'm not fully sure how much coexistence exists in Izuku Midori. He's most, like, 90, I'd say 90% hard work. Well, I'd say Itadori is more like 70% talent, 30% hard work because of all the battles. I don't know. Let's see how he balances it out, though. Talent alone can carry someone without hard work. Nearly every human being on this Money planet has a yeah. natural aptitude for something. They just need to find that talent and put in the effort to turn it into something greater. Now, Yap ability. That is my only talent. I know how to yap extensively. And I not even know. It was bored into me. I come from a long line of yappers. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's mine. What's yours? Leave your talent in the comment section down below. It's, it's a talent show down there. Please let me know. I'm actually not kidding. If you have any unique talents that like you only you can do and have been able to do for a long time innately, tell me. I'm actually interested. So the series that ruined a generation somehow had people coming away from the Rock Lee vs. Gara fight with this idea that hard work will always trump talent. 
and that this would be a core theme. And that was wrong. What the, and, and going back, going back to the Arthur versus or Gara versus Rock Lee, like y'all, we literally saw talent beat hard work. Like what? <laughs> like how do you how do you get like Rock Lee sucks? He does he win a single fight? I'm genuinely trying to think. He loses to Gara. He loses to the Sound Four. He loses to his own clone in part two. Or no, he doesn't lose. I think he ties it and then maybe beats it. And then he does something against Modern, but he doesn't fight him. Rock Lee wins nothing. And he's all hard work. And he sucks for it. You know who does have hard work and talent, though? Naruto Uzumaki. That's literally the coalition of hard work and talent. Where he worked hard to obtain and master his talents. Whether it be for Sage Mode, whether it be for Kurama, whether it be for general ninjutsu in general. Like, that's a example of hard work. And talent collaborating. Naruto is. And Gara, by the time of part two, especially once he's freed of Shukaku, that is definitely a whole bunch of hard work, understanding of one's abilities, merging with talent. But like very specifically, if you try to use Gara and Rock Lee as a side that hard work always wins, when hard work lost. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Once again, I'm no literary master. I I'm illiterate. I can't even read what the title of this video is. I don't even know who Azarath HS is. I I heard his name once, even though I'm still not confident on, on how to pronounce it. I'm illiterate. But I think I got the message of Gara versus Rock Lee. Hard work can't carry you everywhere. Talent is necessary. And at times, talent can overwhelm hard work. Sometimes, like, the, admittedly, when I'm referencing the prodigies that I'm thinking of, like the ones that I haven't met in my life, those monsters, those beasts, those demons, they also worked very, very hard. I I can only think of, like, one lazy prodigy that I knew. But even then, they were still at the top of the class. Sure, the, the people who had talent and hard work still surpassed them. They were number three. But they also never studied for a minute. They would sleep through class. And they still... I don't think I ever saw a grade from them lower than a 95. On anything. In anything. They were just extremely naturally gifted. They were talented. I can tell you. I tried hard. And sometimes I didn't. But everyone I did, I usually lost to them. Talent is crazy. <laughs> if, you're, if you're intellectually gifted enough, if you are just that guy, you can that guy through it. I'm just that guy with a pencil. I'm not that guy with talent. So talent, it's unfair, but once again, not all men are created equal. And you got to be willing to work hard. And even if you do have talent, I recommend working hard. Because while talent can get you through things, it, sometimes talent can't carry you through everything. You still do need some things. Life itself isn't just about talent. Though it does help. Your background will always help you. Your genetics and how good you are at certain things will always help you in comparison to other things. At least in my opinion. I know that may be controversial for some people, but let's see. Of the series. Fun fact, Kakashi explicitly stated that Rock Lee being able to open the fifth gate is an accomplishment that is impossible through hard work alone, but uh, I guess we will just ignore that. The point of- I um, forgot about that too. There you go. Hard work versus talent theme is that talent alone will not get you anywhere if you do not put in the work to prop up that aptitude. That without your own personal efforts, you will not make the progress you wish to see, and even you can lose to a jobber. Midoriya, to an extent, was also talented in that he had an extremely analytical mind and an insane perseverance to keep going. Even that's that's the other thing about Midoriya. There's the one other thing I guess is talent, but even then, is it though? Like, is the ability to not give up talent? I guess you do need to have a natural aptitude for that. Like, I know, me, I would not make it through Midori's situation. Shoot, I would have been given up. Huh, oh, 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 I would have never. <laughs> Golly. So I guess that is talent. Because that is something you need to innately have. It is hard to learn perseverance. It's not impossible. It is not impossible. You can train yourself to be perseverant. You can train yourself to do things that you never thought you could do. Be right here. I try. Every day. To do things and succeed now in doing things that I never thought were possible because I tried hard enough. That was some hard work, but I can tell you it has to do with talent. If I didn't have the app ability that I do innately, I wouldn't be able to do this. But for Midori in particular, yeah, I, I suppose his willingness to never give up is, is a talent, legally speaking. It is natural to him. He didn't have to learn that. Neither is his kindness, but like, stubbornness, I guess it, it's innate, it's innate. So yeah, he's right, he's right. 
after One for All was basically designed to blow him up. If given to another Quirkless Nobody, I don't think they would have followed in his same steps or had the same goal. Itadori, to an extent, also put in hard work. If he didn't put in the training required, his usage of cursed energy would have still been extremely lackluster, probably only having divergent fist up his sleeve. He had to put in the work to learn all that, as well as to understand the basic tenets of landing a Black Flash. There is an issue that arises as these stories continue, however, and the line between what people would perceive as hard work and talent gets blurred. As the power level of a series increases, so too does the amount of conflation between these concepts. Surely Midoriya had to do no hard work because he just so happened to end up unlocking the other quirks along the way, for example. Or as Naruto happened to get all of these crazy new powers, people would consider him all talent, or basically, only powerful because of his origin. This power creep could potentially explain why this conversation happens to begin with, but to be honest, I don't really think so. Okay, so that that's an interesting point he brings up. Let me let me go back to something that's not a black creep. Perfect, this is perfect, right on the quirks. Once again, that goes back to the fundamental part of Midoriya receiving one for all in the first place. Him unlocking the quirks isn't part of his time. It was luck or coincidence. As you can see, what would be innate talent is if he immediately knew how to control Black Whip. But once again, if you read the story, he clearly doesn't. He needs to work hard to figure out how to use it. And then the quirks he gets. He, admittedly, I'll admit, as certain quirks he'd introduced, he does seem more innately talented with them than prior. Like Black Whip is the quirk he works the hardest to get a mastery of. But now that he has a mastery of it, it's the quirk he uses the most. But, like, I'll admit, something like Fajin, he kind of pulls that out out of nowhere. Once again, I haven't reread the Lady Nagan arc in a while. Years. But, not maybe years. Yeah, probably years at this point. It's been a minute since the Lady Nagan arc in the manga. I think it's, like, the early 300s versus now we're in, like, the early 400s. So, haven't reread it in a bit. But Fajin is something he kind of does just pull out like, oh, I guess I'll use the thirds. And then he uses the thirds pretty effectively. But even then, he works how to do that better and figure that out further. Though I'll admit there's a little bit more talent. And something like gear shift, he does kind of just yank out. But apparently he worked with that beforehand. And float gets retroactive work put on it. Is that good writing? A bit of 50-50. I feel like we should have learned about float before float got pulled out retroactively. I think that should have been set up a little bit better. But it was hinted at. We knew it was going to happen. It was told to us that it was going to happen. So, like, once again, it's a matter of Midoriya needing to work hard for it and to think complexly about it. That still means that, sure, while his power level increased and he got new powers that he didn't work for, he had to work to use them. So I still think that counts under hard work. And the power creep, and Naruto's a perfect example for this. Yeah, Naruto is very innately talented. He had all the means of metrics, Son of the Fourth Okage, and Uzumaki with insane amounts of life energy, and chakra amounts, and plus the nine tails inside of him, and then he literally got empowered by a god. But, like, remember, that came after years upon years upon years upon years of hard work. The boy couldn't make a shadow clone, gosh darn it. He trained all night to get the multi-shadow clone jutsu. The boy had Kurama become an asset, proper asset, over the course of like three days before the end of the series, or before the end of series final time skip. I remember, he unlocked Kurama as an ally on the final day of the war. Kurama was a negative aspect of his life. I know you saw all those swing scenes. That was because of Big Rama. Not Big Raga, Big Rama. Like, like, come on now. That... The one thing, maybe, that could be argued as just straight talent is the God stuff. Because it's like stated in the data book, he had innate mastery of the God stuff. But even that is just a culmination, a higher level to all of the things he worked hard for. Whether it be the hard work and sacrifice that went into Sage Mode, whether it be the hard work and sacrifice that went into Mastering Kurama and his abilities, whether it be the hard work and sacrifice of the Rasengan. It's just, the Sage of Six Paths mode is just a higher level of everything he did before. And a merging of everything. I'll admit, I think KCM2 Sage Mode is the pinnacle of the perfect merger between talent and hard work, where most of it is perfectly balanced, where most of it is the talent that is innate to Naruto, from having Karama to having large amounts of chakra to being able to use Sage Energy, but the hard work that went into bonding with and mastering Karama's power, mastering Sage Chakra, and mastering Chakra Control in general. That's the balance. 
I'll admit, Sage of Six Pass mode takes it hard over in the talent because he already has innate mastery of it. But he has innate mastery over it because not just it's part of the form, it's an evolution of everything he's already worked hard for. Sasuke is a better example of balance that came with the Renegon because he just didn't know how to use it. That didn't come with an instruction manual. So Sasuke gets a better balance towards the end with his final endgame power up. But I'd still say Midoriya, even with the power creep, Naruto, even with the power creep, is still a good balance of hard work and talent in the case of Naruto and mostly hard work for Midoriya. Verbatim. Like, no contest. That's what I think. And what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, and I think a big reason why a lot of people don't have the issue with Itadori, despite him also getting much, much stronger as he progresses, is because it's not as blatant. It's not as clear. Itadori doesn't get new forms, new powers, until blood manipulation recently in the manga. He doesn't get that. He just gets stronger and faster and more durable. That's it. Meanwhile, it's very clear with Midoriya. He gets more powers. Naruto, he gets new forms. So I think it's a way it's presented and the frequency of the presentation that may lead to some conflation and the loss of the initial theme of talent working with hard work that's established in both, or technically all three series in a way. But even still, I wouldn't discredit Midoriya for not knowing how this mysterious power that's long been established to be mysterious and unknowable acting randomly that he then has to work around. Come on now, y'all. Let's see. Honest, I don't really think so. Let's ask probably the most important question of this video. Yes. Who gives... <gasps> I think Language! the reason why these cover... Gosh darn it! <laughs> I got black, I got bamboozled. I was, I was chilling. I was rather, no. Why are you empty? Pencil, no. Please. No, I took the top off. Ah, please. I need a pencil to come work with me. Right now. Gosh darn it. Editing me. Wake up. <laughs> I know you've been asleep through majority of this video. Editing me. You need to wake up. Wake up. What was that? That was like 26. Let's say 2650. It's, it'll be very clear on screen editing me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And But to answer his question, to answer his question before he goes into answering the question. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like, if the story's still good, it doesn't matter. If the story's bad, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But, like, look at someone like One Punch Man, who has never had to worry about a struggle throughout the entire run of his manga. Does that make Saitama a boring character? No. Well, he was all hard work for it, and all that hard work is resulting in boundless talent that he... Well, not really, because he started off weak and then became strong. But by the time the series starts, we don't really know about that. We learn about that retroactively. And even then, the ability to get as strong as he did off of only 100 punches, 100 squats, 100 sit-ups, and a 10-kilometer run every day for, like, a few years. That's still talent. He had a whole bunch of talent. Is anyone mad at Saitama? No. Goku. A very, very, very high amount of innate talent. Does it matter? No. Every single form Goku has is a result of talent. I want you to know that. Super Saiyan? Saiyan genes. Super Saiyan 2? Saiyan genes. Super Saiyan 3? Saiyan genes. The God Ritual, Saiyan Jeans. Super Saiyan God. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. Or Super Saiyan Blue, Saiyan Jeans. The only one that isn't, Mastered Ultra Instinct. But even then, he's only able to achieve that after a massive amount of power growth because of his Saiyan Jeans. But that's still a whole bunch of hard work. We don't get on Goku's case, do we? Because he's consistently training, right? Right? Just like Midoriya's consistently training. So it does really matter. It helps. It helps. And, and notably, I guess it could get in the way if, like, a series is trying to say one thing and it ends up saying another. Which I know a lot of people accuse Naruto for. A lot of people assume that by Naruto being the child of destiny, the reincarnation of Ashura, all that. Oh, well, he, did Neji, he was, Neji was right. No, he wasn't. Remember, the theme, the thing that Naruto was battling against was fate. And the cyclic nature of the world. And that he ultimately needs to give into that cyclic cycle. So sure, even though he ended up being the child of the fourth Hokage, sealing and Jinjuriki of Kurama, and the reincarnation of Asura, what did he do? He broke the cycle. He proved Neji wrong. He ended the conflict that transcended numerous generations before him by aligning with Sasuke, not executing him. Naruto was still right, even though he ended up being extremely talented and extremely lucky due to his biogenetic makeup. So it doesn't really matter, at least in my opinion. I think when it gets brought up is when people have nothing else to compare the characters on. 
Like, for Yuji and Midoriya, especially, it is literally a matter of preference. Both of them are very well-written characters, in my opinion. I prefer Itadori more, just because I kind of find Midoriya boring. But that's literally my preference. I can't point at anywhere in the manga and say Midoriya has bad writing. I can argue that he's a flat character, but that's not bad writing. In fact, it's good writing. The ability to maintain a flat character as long as Ori has. And still have the narrative progress around it. Crazy. Can I say Goku's a bad... Well, to be fair, Goku's not a flat character. His morals and ideology changes. But, like, still... Can I call Goku a bad character? No! Can I call... Itadori a bad... No! Like, and what... And what about their characters... Or the talent or hard work that goes with it... Conflicts with their respective narratives? None of it! Nothing. There's literally no effect. So I can't really... I can't really come in and be like... Oh, well, this is bad here. Why this? No, no I can't. I just can't. Because it's not there. The narrative doesn't exist. Because it is mostly irrelevant. So no one no one should care. No one should. But we will. Because we're anime fans. We're going to look for something to argue about. But let's see. Conversations happen is far more simple. And this is going to sound weird, but I don't think the discussion is about the discussion. I don't think it ever has been. If it was, why would people be making these insanely, highly, factually inaccurate charts? What these... T and this is going to... Now wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Not weird, but I don't think the discussion is about the discussion. I don't think it ever has been. If it was, why would people be making these insanely- Okay. Now. Brain. Brain. Ants. Ants! I'm sorry, I watched the Ink Tanks, um, like, recent Gormond episode from last week, and they brought up that Ants clip from, I believe it was Ant-Man's 2 promotional material with- I'm not gonna remember the actor's name, but the Ants! Ants! And ever since I've been like- braining to do that now hear me out hear me out he's right <laughs> like he is, just, he is just flat out right in the sense that yeah it never really was about talent versus hard work no one really cares about that it's what it, it's essentially it's kind of like putting a wall between your opinions on the characters like how you feel about the character when you start talking about talent and hard work and how it affects the character unless you're generally opening up discussion forum for that which sometimes people do, but I still think it's a little bit disingenuous, it's usually just to hide how you feel about the character. Like, verbatim. And, like, looking at this chart right here, let's break it down one by one. We got all nine, and we got time. Maki, hard work. Her skills are hard work earned, but her awakening, her just being a heavily restriction user, that was a form of talent. The moment Mai sacrificed herself, she boosted up massively. She didn't work hard for that. She lost her sister. It came with a cost. It came with a narrative cost. But that in of itself does not constitute hard work. Her ability to use set strength and power comes from a bit of hard work and changing her perspective. In the Mio domain, she ended up wrestling for who knows how many times in order to come out with that freedom and understanding, which is a bit of hard work and it requires changing one's perspective. That innately is at least some hard work. But Maki is talented. The Toji was talented. Neither of them were necessarily hard work. Because they were born with heavenly restrictions. It's just that Toji didn't have a lock on his that needed to be opened with a key that Maya ended up opening for Maki. So I can agree with that. Yuta, talent, yeah, in a sense. But even then, he worked hard for it. He did not have an easy time mastering Rika, getting that under his control. And he even had to work three months to get his special grade sorcerer status back to reestablish that connection with Rika and reach the levels that he did. Yuta goes through it. He's talent and hard work. Hakari Kinji. Eh? Once again, that's his innate technique. His innate domain. He rigged it that way. And sure, we don't... We, unfortunately, we just don't know enough about Akari, in my opinion, to like designate him as talent or hard work. But I can see him as both. He seems naturally strong. He seems very, very built for it. Built for combat. And his technique is really, really good. And it's rigged in his favor because he's the house and the house always wins. But with that, I'd say that's a whole lot of talent in his favor. Just as much as it is hard work. Because notably, Gojo never notes him as training especially hard or doing anything or even following orders that well. In fact, it's quite the opposite. So it seems like he was very, very talented. Higuruma has a whole bunch of talent. I agree. But he also had to work to figure out domains and cursed energy and all that. He reverse engineered it and became grade one level. But yeah, he had a bunch of talent. But he still had to work to figure that stuff out. It's talent and hard work working together. It's always percentage. It's like a slider. There are few characters who are 50% one way or the other. 
I'd say Midoriya. Once again, no, I say this more. Once again, I think that's a whole lot of hard work. I'd give Midoriya like 10% talent just because of the quirk, but even then, it's coincidence, not really talent. But Yuji, once again, a clever Higuruma. Let's talk about Tsukuda. That boy was born a monster. You don't just come out, four arms, four eyes, all that. Nah, but <laughs> Sukuna is, I'll agree, he's talent and hard work. The balance, though, is very unknown. We don't know enough about Sukuna. Same thing with the cart. We just don't know enough about him to determine how much was hard work. The hard work that is confirmed for Sukuna is getting spatial slash. And, like, waiting on Megami's downfall. That's about it. Like, outside of that, what other hard work has he done? We don't know enough. It could have been all hard work. Maybe he did work that hard to grow those extra two arms, grow those extra two eyes, and master Soshi as well as he did. Or maybe he's just naturally good at it. We don't know. He's a whole bunch of talent with some hard work. Either though to Yuji. Once again, major talent with hard work in there in between. But once again, he's talented hard work as well. Gojo Sato being reduced down to just talent? When he couldn't even use his full ability kit until he was like 18? And then by the time he was 18, he still hadn't mastered it. He still hadn't gotten domain. He still hadn't done that. No, he had to work for that. He had to work for domain. Work for RCT. Work to set up RCT as he did. Work to figure out red. Work to figure... Well, red, he kind of just pulled out. But still, that was a reapplication of his technique that he only learned after fighting for his life. What I say is pretty hard work against Toji Fushiguro and then mastering purple, then mastering red, and then doing all he did after that. He's talent and hard work. Is it a whole bunch of talent? Absolutely. He was born powerful. I agree with that. But... Just like Yuji was born powerful, and we can agree on that. Miwa, she's hard work. It's this this one's cruel. <laughs> like it's it's neither in the sense that she's not powerful, especially in comparison to anyone else on this list, but she still worked hard. Like we literally everyone remembers the panel of her hands literally bleeding from how hard she was swinging her katana to try and do good. That's hard work, and Megami's hard work too. He has a whole bunch of talent, don't get me wrong, but as much as we like to clown a potential man for being potential man, his potential wasn't all that. <laughs> he had to work for it. He had to evolve in his own ways, means, and metric. He literally has to fight to use his own technique. You want to tell me that isn't hard work? He's one of the only techniques in the series that'll fight back. Unless he just stuck with divine dogs his entire life and they were born like Fenris wolf size, which they weren't. He had to work hard to get every single Shikigami and every single thing, every domain, every refinement of his domain, everything. Every single character here is a mix of hard work and talent. Of course, Miwa has like 0.01% talent. It, the 1% is the ability to use Curse Energy. That's it. That's the one bit of talent that she had. That's what she was scouted for. But other than that, yeah, everyone here is hard work and talent, at least in my opinion. I do, I'm kind of sad he zones in on Maki, though, but I get why. I get why people, why you would zone in on Maki in particular. Because especially in reference to this panel, it seems like... But then again, I'd say a better panel to use here, if you want to, like, say extremely wrong, would probably have been Maki when she freshly awoke. Like, the Toji panel, where she's compared directly to Toji. Because, once again, outside of the payment cost that was Mai's life, her sister, that was not hard work. She just awoke stronger because she was a Heavenly Restriction user. Let's see. Highly factually inaccurate charts. What these talent versus hard work charts come down to is a feeling that people have. A feeling yep. of having to justify why they like something. You'll see this all over. What did I say? It's that barrier. It's that wall between how you feel about something and trying to justify it. Which is fine. I didn't justify your opinions. I think that's the good thing to do. Notably, I have opinions and some of them I can't justify. Like, there's a series that I talk about on the channel. That does, I mean, I guess it's not necessarily a spoiler, but I won't talk about it too in-depth. I talk about it on the channel, I review it every week, because it drops every week. There's a character in there that has a design I don't like. I cannot tell you why, but I can tell you I don't like it. I, I despise that character. I can't explain it. I despise Panda from JJK, and I can tell you why. I can make a 15-hour video on why. Okay, I couldn't do it. Well, who knows? If I really lose it, <laughs> if I use my own talent for hating, I, I probably could. But that's when I can rationalize versus when I can't rationalize. When you can't rationalize why you don't like a character or why you can't rationalize why you like a character, talent and hard work is an easy thing to slide in there. It opens the door. Once again, referring back to Maki, it's that key that unlocks the discussion. Which will typically lead back into your opinions about the character. If you don't like Midoriya, chalk it all up to all talent. 
But if you really like Yuji, chalk it up to hard work, and vice versa. You can make the same argument for Yuji that's always using his Midoriya. Oh, well, Yuji's just stupid talented. He learned Black Flash the same day he learned about it, and he didn't even get to see one. He mastered Cursed Energy over the course of a night while watching movies. Oh, he unlocked his Cursed Energy after eating a finger. What kind of hard work was that? He was already born superhuman. He doesn't struggle at all. If you don't like Yuji. You know what I'm saying? Like, the door is open. But let's see. Of the internet, people grasping at reasons to prove why something they enjoy is good. In this instance, societally, hard work is more socially appealing than talent. Yep. Hard work shows passion, it shows dedication, it shows self-discipline. Of course, my favorite had to do hard work. Why would they be a product of purely natural aptitude, when the trait of being hardworking is far more appealing? Ultimately, it's just a value argument. People always feel that they need some value for why they like what they like. That's why you'll see Demon Slayer fans use their series sales to gas it. That's why you'll see JJK fans talk about how much death their story has, or how it's darker and more mature than other series, therefore it's better. That's why you'll- oh, Something just flashed, I was like, I'm not gonna hunt that down. But... It's true! I ain't gonna lie to you! I do it. I do it. I do it. I like JJK more than MHA. Why? Because I like the darker tone. Does that innately make it better than, J than MHA? No. It doesn't. If I, if I if I forced myself to do a pound-for-pound pound analysis, I would probably, in the end, have to give it to MHA. Unironically. Overall. Because, once again, my biases will start to kick in. But MHA just has more. And more of good quality. Do you know why we always talk about Gay Gay never beating the allegations? It's because they don't. Do you know why we talk about the extremely rushed pacing of JJK and how that acts as a massive detriment to it? Because it exists. Do you know why <laughs> a lot of people find Yuji boring? Because the narrative isn't completely clear about why you should find him interesting. Well, I do, and others do. It's not an eight. It's not very clear. The series moves really, really quickly. And it misuses a whole bunch of characters, as we commonly agree. Like, if I'm going, if we're going pound for pound, yeah. I use the darkness of JJK to justify why I like it more than MHA. Hmm? I'm, I'm going to I'm got to you. Am I going to change my opinion? No. <laughs> Even though I know, I'm just using a justification. That's right, that's right. And I ain't even knock this hustle. See, Chainsaw Man fans bring up its female cast. That is why you'll see every anime fan under the sun talking about objectivity. Because it's never enough to just enjoy something and... Unfortunately, I've been commanded by Azeroth AHS to watch Can Anime Be Objectively Bad? Media Literacy 101. Wait a minute, this is him! <laughs> I think this is him. So <laughs> I will watch it. I'll react to that one, too. I've been saving Azeroth AHS's videos, too. But some of them are long. And, like, I'm scared to do too. Like, this is a 10-minute video. We're 43 minutes in, and I'm only halfway. I'm not even at five minutes yet. I need to shut up. Let's go. That's it. Just enjoying something and having pride in media you enjoy is something people struggle with. They end up intertwining those things they enjoy so much with their own personality or sense of identity, so when someone comes by and criticizes it for any particular reason, it feels like a personal invalidation of their character, and they reach for what they believe to be objective metrics to protect themselves. Keegan's theory of adult development comes from Robert Keegan, a former Harvard psychologist who charted the five distinct developmental stages of an adult. According to Keegan, 65% never make it past stage 3. It's not a hardline rule, like you as a human being are at stage 3, it's more like a spectrum. And to transition into more of an adult, one must shift from a more subject-oriented view to an object-oriented view, to take control of or to be able to reflect upon. Stage 1 is the impulsive mind, generally what you'll see in children. Stage 2 is the imperial mind, people who put their own needs in full focus. And stage 3, where most people are, is defined by those adults taking the opinions and beliefs of those around them to heart. Or as Natalie Murad put it, we experience ourselves as a function of how others experience us. We take an external... And that's accurate. I was like, I don't... This is why... Go sub to Asher at the HS. He gets educational, consistently. <laughs> I, I swear, I'd be learning stuff. I had, I've, I think I loosely heard of Keegan once or twice, maybe, but I never even knew about that. But yeah, we assign our value as adults by the value that other people give us. And of course, you know, that's not mostly, our, that's not really our fault because we're humans, we're social creatures, but like, yeah, we assign value by what other people give value to things. Why do we like expensive cars? Because society high, highly values expensive cars. Mansions, society highly values mansions. 
What is object? If you are two people living in a multi-billion dollar mansion, what does that do for you? Nine out of ten times. Occasionally, you can have a whole bunch of people over. Yeah, but you're not doing that every single day. What is the objective function behind ha behind having a mansion that could literally fit 150 people in it? None. But, society, societally speaking, you can measure someone's metric of success by how much excess they're able to spend. It's true. It's right. It's how it be. It'd be like that when it'd be like that, especially when it'd be like that. And this is the case, especially where it'd be like that, where we always give value based on what society has given value to. And of course, there are good things that come with that, like order <laughs> and not drastically randomly attacking people. Like that comes from societal implications. The reason people control themselves is due to fear of repercussion from society, the world around them, which is good. We do not want people wiling out on each other. Trust me, we don't. Not a safe space. Not a safe world, if that were the case. But at the same time, yeah, it does lead to immaturity in the state of wanting to make everything justifiable based on how society says something is justifiable. It's okay to like things just because you like them. I can sit here and tell you dead to your face that Kingdom Hearts is probably my favorite game series of all time. More than Pokemon. More than... That's the main one in my brain. I don't play too many game series. I'll be completely honest. More than Final Fantasy. More than Mario. More than Legend of Zelda. More than all that. But can I sit here and objectively tell you that it is better than any of the other series I listed? No! It's not better sales-wise. It's not better game amount-wise. It's not better game quality. Like, it's just not. But it's my favorite. And that's fine. At least for me. But a lot of people struggle with that. And heck, I still, I'm confident I'm still probably on, like, stage two. <laughs> <laughs> or like very early stage three. I don't know what stage four is, but I highly doubt on that. I'm most likely, I'm part of the statistic, gosh darn it, let's see. View of ourselves, like, oh, they'll think I look stupid and make it a part of our internal experience. Therefore, I am stupid. Stage three adults will seek external validation as a method of defining their sense of self. This can take form in average everyday encounters, like putting a lot of stock in a grade you get at school, or waiting to hear what other people might think about a piece of art you enjoyed. That is to say, people's enjoyment of a series can often come down to other people's expectations, which sounds strange when you verbalize it. It's also important to note that humans are extremely social animals. Many, many friendships yep. or social bonds are formed over shared interests. Don't worry, I'm subscribed, I'm subscribed. I like, I liked, I liked the video. We're now at 6.14 at the time of liking. I'm not sure when... When this live reaction will go up, what it'll be. I'm, I'm, we're here. We're here. I like. And I'm subscribed. And I hit the notification bell. Don't worry. Okay, maybe not the notification bell. I, I'm bad at that. I, I say hit the notification. I need to hit the notification. There we go. Hey, yeah. Uh, there we go. But let's see. So when people find validation from other people's perspectives, not only can their sense of self feel at risk, so too can the bonds they have formed. It's like the validity of those connections are being attacked. Thus, begins an arbitrary cycle of criticism, and then people defending it using the most absurd arguments to justify why they like a thing. Take, for example, our previous example of using a series sales chart to defend it. You criticize an aspect of my favorite media or say it's not very good, well, screw you, the sales number is really big. That's the... You know, once again, go back to going back to the video game discussion. Kimetsu no Yaba is obviously a fantastic example of this, and I like Kimetsu no Yaba. I like Demon Slayer. Is it, is it my favorite ninja? No. Is it my top three ninja? No. Is it my top five ninja? Uh, no. Is it my top six ninja? Uh, maybe eight. But admittedly, I haven't read the main new gen for one, and for two, look at Pokemon. I love Pokemon to this day. I didn't really buy Scarlet and Violet, though. I just didn't think the games were up to quality. But they sold like hotcakes. I think they're like, what, they're the first or second? No, I think they're the best-selling Pokemon games of all time. Quality was standing. So Pokemon has to be great, right? It has to be the best video game series ever. Pokemon is the largest media IP to have ever existed in human history pokemon has reeled in more money than most countries <laughs> like straight up the pokemon ip across all of its fields has 
Right? Does that make it the best IP ever? Because number's the biggest? I wouldn't think so. But once again, that's me and my subjective opinion. Going objectively, if we're comparing things by that, then yeah, Pokemon has to be the best. Just like if we're compa if we're specifically comparing the metric of who has the best sales numbers, then yeah, Demon Slayer has to be the best. But if we're talking overall, then the conversation gets more complicated. And the more com complicated the conversation is, the more personal and disgusting and hateful things can get. So I can understand why people get a little bit defensive. And I don't blame people. It's okay to get defensive over the things you like. Do you know how hard it was for me to come out to my parents as a Kingdom Hearts fan? <laughs> they knew. They knew. They were not shocked when when uh, No Name showed up. They weren't. They weren't shocked when the Ultimate Weapon did either. They knew that I was unhealthily addicted. Gosh darn it! I pre-ordered Kingdom Hearts three, and I will be pre-ordering four when that game finally gets it. <laughs> I will be getting the collector's addiction. I did. It literally there it goes. It slipped out the addiction because it's a part of me. Gosh darn it! I'm, I'm itching and scratching. Injected straight into my veins. But if someone were to critique it, my feelings. My feelings, they could be hurt. So I can understand it. It's a standard appeal to popularity. If a lot of people like my thing, then surely nothing about it can be lacking. If you attack a thing that a lot of people like, then surely you are attacking the validity of liking it as well. Or what you might have seen as a couple days ago, people using Jujutsu Kaisen winning a lot of anime awards to say that it's the best modern anime. As someone who has been pretty critical of My Hero Academia's direction for the past few years, as I'm sure most of you know, <laughs> believe me when I say I know firsthand the consequences of being critical of something. I don't have many screenshots anymore because YouTube auto-deletes a lot of them, but I have people following me essentially to the ends of the earth to try and get into contact with me. People I've made clear I have no interest in speaking with because it's very clear that they have too much skin in the game. People will make entire posts on my existence, or Language. people offhandedly saying I should. I got it. And like he, he's going into that. Notably, I've been lucky enough to not have been that critical. Even when I am critical, luckily enough, I'm tiny enough that I don't necessarily have to worry about it. <laughs> like who the he heavens forbid, I get big and I get my opinions. But like most of the time, I get I can understand exactly what he means. It's never that deep, y'all. <laughs> I hate to say, it. like don't get me wrong, I love. A lot of the fiction I consume. Heck, I am itching and scratching to play this bad boy right here. You know I'm one. I'm fiending for it. Still haven't played it yet. But, like, who knows what my opinions will be on that. I still haven't actually played the first one. I got that one. Hopefully I can actually play it. But, like, that's the thing. It's okay for people to not like your thing or to have issues with it and for them to express their opinions on it. Please don't, don't attack people if they disagree with you. It's, not, it's never that. It's never that deep. All right, it is never that deep. It's a piece of fiction. It's never that deep. There are things more important in life to get mad over. Trust me, there are. I feel bad. Like notably, this doesn't just happen to Azeroth. This happens to a lot of people. Whenever they express their opinions, it's never that deep. It's never. Please. I don't know, but I can understand why people identify. Because once again, a lot of people use fiction as a connecting piece between other humans. And attacking that bond in any way, shape, or form will lead to an extremely defensive reaction, especially if you formulate yourself heavily around said piece of fiction. But at the same time, I wouldn't say that's healthy. And I'd say manage it better if you can. If you can't, then you can't. But I'd say fight it. Fight it. Don't, don't let your identity be fully wrapped up in something that is completely independent of you and will never care about you. It's At least in my opinion, it's okay to wrap up your identity in some things. But like... I will never meet Kohei or Koshi. Gay okay, Akutami. I mean, I would like to meet them one day. But, like, likely would never. Their works, never. The JJK manga will never look me dead in the eyes and speak to me. If it did, I'd be scared. <laughs> but, like, it's never that deep, y'all. Please, please, enjoy life. Enjoy fiction. But don't, don't do this. Don't, don't harass people because of their opinions. Really? A piece of, really? Let's see bombed not that i take that as a serious threat because uh, <laughs> clearly not but the levels of hyperbole people are willing to go to because i said i don't like a comic book uh goes to show you the amount of parasocial buildup that can happen for being critical i also on the flip side have first-hand experience of the opposite when i was younger and more invested in my hero academia i would spend a lot of time defending it like it was my job uh, mostly because i was trying to make it my job you know content creation and all that but also because yeah. felt like it didn't deserve it and i probably made too much of my life about this cartoon I like to think I have grown up pretty significantly from that time. Uh, a lot of this anime community discourse just spawns from young people who feel the need to fight for agendas. Praise for a series often comes at the cost of another. 
And notably, once again, I think it's okay to have this. I should have paused or something. Else, but I think it's okay to have agendas. I love agenda guys. <laughs> I really, really do. But you can't tell. I take it most. I, I like. I take something seriously. But even then, never that deep. So it's okay to have fun. It's okay to be young. But don't let. Once again, don't let negativity seep into you. Not to such a deep degree. Fiction is meant to be a release from reality. Typically made in order to make you feel something, yes, but not extreme negativity. And if that negativity is there, it's meant to be for some sort of cathartic release. Don't let discussion of fiction break you down or turn you into a worse person. Because it is never, ever that serious. We all like to make jokes about Boruto and Black Clover, but <laughs> those guys are getting beat down all the time. Yeah, I didn't... I don't know, personally, especially as a guy, right, who had opinions on, not necessarily on Black Clover, notably, I never got the Black Clover hate, I, to this day, I don't really fully understand the Black Clover hate, I actually ended up like, I like the series so much, it's now part of my regular review schedule, I wish I had gotten on it sooner, and I wish I was more consistent with it, but once again, times change, I've developed as a content creator myself, and my willingness to be consistent, and my want to pr produce consistent content, so of course that's changed, but like, I never got the Black Clover hate, but Porto, yeah, but it's kind of boring all the time. Mostly it was as a joke, because once again, I never actually consumed this series outside of the manga, like, once. I didn't, I, I don't think I've, I think I watched one episode of the Boruto anime years ago. I care. It's never that deep. <laughs> At least to me. I never got the Boruto 8. Nor the Black Clover 8. Both are fine. They're pieces of fiction. It's not that deep. Let's see. Time as a tool to praise other art. I like to call it Agenda Brain, where in an effort to push something you like, your brain just kind of deactivates when it comes to other series. People fail to apply the same level of critical thinking or nuance one might use for their favorite, as opposed to the competition, like MHA versus JJK discussions. I mean, just stop and think why factually untrue. You know the funny thing? I'm gonna react to that. That's literally in my watch list. I'm gonna react to that one. <laughs> I may, like, depending, once again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do some bulk recording today. So I may end up reacting to that one later today. Interesting. I'll have, the, I'll have this video in mind as I react to that one. Very, very interesting. Statements, like Midoriya being only talent, exist in the first place. Think about why this video exists. And these conversations are not coming from a place of good faith. We talked about stage three of Keegan's theory of adult development. But the next stage is stage four, a self-authoring mind. As Natalie Murad put it once again, quote, We can define who we are and not be defined by other people. We understand that we are a person with thoughts, feelings, and beliefs that are independent from the standards and expectations of our environment. We can now distinguish the opinions of others from our own opinions to formulate our own seat of judgment. This video isn't to say that you can't defend things you like. I cannot. Yeah, I don't think I've stage for you. A lot, a lot of my thoughts and opinions come from generalized thoughts and opinions. Hey, it's even my common belief that we as humans are a coagulation of all of our experiences and are a reflection of our environments deeply, drastically, and fundamentally. That isn't even my idea. That's just a common idea that I've adopted for myself. So I ain't at stage four. Who knows when I'll get there? Maybe when I'm older. And I'm already old. So I may not have that much time. <laughs> Let's see. Criticisms you think are unfair. It's more so to bring attention to the fact that it's okay to like them. What is stage five? I mean, I'm now, gosh darn, now I was gonna make me look up psychology. I come to YouTube to make content and not learn, gosh darn it, as a why? But let's see. And it's also okay to not like things, yeah. and you are more than the things you like. There's a cognitive bias called the negativity bias. Something very positive will have less of an impact on a person's behavior and cognition than something equally emotional but negative. Yep, it's true. It's true. Yeah, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever heard of that scenario? A thousand compliments, but the one negative thing sticks with you. Happens. Happens to the best. Once again, it's happened to me. But once again, I've tried to move past that. Realize there is value, endless value in positivity. Life is better when you're happy. Trust me. And life is not always going to be happy. But you only get one life. And you gotta live it the best way you can. And in my opinion, the best way to live life is positively. Do not mire yourself in negativity. And if you are going to, use that negativity as a direct path to positivity. That's what I try to do. Even when I don't like things, I try to explain them because I think that's fun. 
have fun in life because you only have the one to live and that is something that will never change if and that's objective you could be in a community of like-minded people that all frequently guess that you do yet a couple of people might oh shoot he's thanking the patrons right now gosh darn it, this is a 10 minute video how did i be here for an hour why do i do this why do i do this i'm sorry computer i'm sorry Y'all think it's I who suffer when I yap. No, it's my computer. <laughs> Which then needs to export all this. <laughs> Want to get wiped immediately. Post criticism, you feel like you're being attacked, even though it's just one or two people in a sea of thousands. Next time you see some stuff like this, just think about where it's coming from. And maybe it's not even worth engaging with. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for the funny YouTube algorithm. You can also become a YouTube member, which gives you access to your behind-the-scenes content, a badge on comments and livestream chats, as well as the use of emotes and videos before their actual release. You can also check the description for socials like Twitter, where I'm objectively correct all the time, and Discord, where we talk about ReZero, My Hero Academia, Jujutsu Kaisen, and stuff like that. That's about it, though. Thank you for watching. See ya. Alright. Y'all want me to react to that two-hour and four-minute video? If so, y'all don't love me, because we'd be here for, like, 15 years. But with that being, and I already watched it. So it wouldn't be a reaction. It would just be a breakdown. But still, let me close that off. W video. W video. Fantastic. Once again, quality work by Azeroth HS. If I know, and that's the thing. If I know I'm clicking on his video, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. No, like, come on. Don't turn off. But yeah, I agree. I agree. He, he said not a single thing I disagreed with. I only elaborated on his points. He did fantastic. He was much more concise than I was. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave work talent like, literally, work talent, whether it be one word or two words, in the comment section down below. I did thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that little notification also you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do happen to have a Patreon down below where you can support me for as little as one, kind of one dollar a month to get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You can also now become a member of the channel for as little as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the live reactions to both the next chapter of MHA and the next chapter of JJK, along with ad free variations of all my videos, early content, and if you become a $25 patron or a $25 member, you can order whatever video you want. Now, I thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Dagger the Pencil, riding off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members: Connor Plays, Greyhound, Atkins Void, Astro, Red Wolf, Four Seven Six Five, Eternal Flame, and Teen Mitgao. And I'd like to give a thank you to our five dollar patrons: Steron, Sean, Panda Goat, Midnight Lord Twenty One, Metal Solid Crisis, Kevin, Igneo, and Ehack One. And I'd like to give a thank you to our seven dollar member: Autumn Mornings Lazo. And I'd like to give a big thank you to our ten dollar member: Jay Warrior. And I'd like to give another thank you to our ten dollar patrons: Joaquin and Idemokami. And I'd like to give a gargantuan thank you to our twenty five dollar member: Alex Ice Rose. And I'd like to give another gargantuan thank you to our twenty five dollar patron: Winter. Along with another juicy thank you to. Our $25 patron, China Doll 9 And I'd like to give a final Giga Gargantuan thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.